Hi, I'm Marty Gold Cummings, host of Logo's newest political talk show, The Marty Report, and I'm reclaiming my time and answering 20 questions. My favorite color is pink, sometimes purple, but mainly pink. Splits are cartwheels, sit, sitting, sitting in a, sitting down in a chair. Instead of ketchup or mustard, I like veganese, vegan mayonnaise. I love it. My favorite dessert is tapioca pudding. Ew, why did I just say that? <laughs> but I do. My favorite song to lip sync to is anything by uh, Alex Newell. Any song by Alex Newell. The first time I voted was for myself for student body vice president in high school. <laughs> I won. My retreat when politics gets overwhelming is cuddling with my dogs or taking them to the dog park. And I also like just hanging out with my hubby. He's very nice. <laughs> my favorite drag queen is Marty Gold Cummings. No, I can't say that. My favorite drag queen is Miss Richfield. The best advice that I've ever received was probably about nine or so years ago, I was having some anxiety and a friend said to me that when you have fear, uh, it's the same kind of butterfly feeling as excitement. So you just have to tell your body that you're not fearful or scared. You are excited for whatever the possibilities could be. If I was running for president, my running mate would be either AOC or Kirsten Gillibrand. If my campaign for president had a theme song, it would just pick any Dolly Parton, just anything by Dolly Parton, even the sad ones, because they're so, I love Dolly. I would say the best piece of advice that I have for somebody who is new to the art form of drag is there are no limitations to drag, there are no rules to drag, and there's no box for drag. So the minute somebody tells you there's limitation rules or there's lines to stay inside of, they are muddying the waters of drag. So stay true to who you are as an artist because it's beautiful. Living or dead, I would love to brunch with Dolly Madison because she's a badass bitch who, when the White House was burning down, ran back inside to get a portrait of herself and her husband. That's like the original Instagram. Like, we gotta get that picture like no matter what. Like, she went into a burning building to get her own portrait. She would have work. I have a couple LGBTQIA plus heroes, but I would say it would be uh, Jose Seria, who was the first drag queen to ever run for public office in America in 1961. She ran for the Board of Supervisors in San Francisco and later went on to found the Imperial Court System, which has raised millions of dollars for LGBTQIA plus organizations. And of course, Harvey Milk and Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. The activists are leaders that I look to for guidance. I really look to the voices of people like AOC, who's like, young and powerful and like breaking barriers. And I look to Andrea Jenkins, uh, who is just such a badass. I take them both. Uh, flats or heels? I would say a heel that is always five inches. I am a size queen. And uh, wear those until your feet are swollen and then you take them off like I did for this video. My childhood crush, his name was Greg, and he was really beautiful. He looked like a young Prince Harry with little freckles and his little red hair shining in the sunlight. And he did not come to my third grade birthday party. So Gregory, I hope you're watching. I think probably one of the most iconic things that has happened at a gig was performing in San Francisco with a really bad fever. And in the middle of an 11 minute Liza Minnelli medley, my fever broke and it was like SeaWorld, like just water everywhere. And they threw money and they cheered. And then I uh, crowd surfed with my sweaty fever broken body. <laughs> so gross. When did I get involved? Uh, it was a, it was very much like a lot of Americans leading up to the 2016 election when, when you had a, a candidate describing people in racist and bigoted ways. And it was a light bulb moment, you know, and then after the election, it was one of those, 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 uh, life kind of affirming things where you're like, okay, am I going to be on my deathbed looking back at my life and say, I stood up and did the right thing and led with a strong moral compass? Or did I sit by and let democracy dwindle and die? I proudly can say that I, I think I have contributed to upholding democracy and I hope that you uh, do that as well. Why is drag political? Drag is in itself a form of resistance. It's resistance against 
the norms that circulate around gender and identity. It is a form of resistance against the patriarchal system that's been in place for generations upon generations. And it doesn't matter how you identify within your sexuality or your gender. Drag is for all people. There is no limit to who can do drag or why. Drag in itself is an opportunity to feel freedom and express yourself the way you want to express yourself. And that in itself is a form of uh, political action because so often we as people are told how we're supposed to behave or dress or act within certain boxes. And drag has no box to put you into. And that is going against the system. I had such a good time talking with all of you on Logo. So make sure that you watch the Marty Report on Logo's YouTube and social media platforms. See you there.